Okay, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Lee. Um, so, look, the full name of our project is uh, Pacific Motorway Upgrade M1, M3 Gateway Motorway Merge. Uh, it's a bit of a mouthful, so uh, you'll hear me referring to it as M1, M3. So, look, the M1, M3 project is a relatively small project in comparison to a lot of the larger infrastructure projects that you're seeing from down south. Um, so, look, it's not a particularly complex project, not a really very high-profile project, but what makes it interesting is this is a BIM project that's being led by our 12D civil teams. So why I, I mention that is you'll, you'll probably see from a lot of the larger BIM projects, they all have a large a, a tunnel component, a lot of large structures. So they're typically led by a BIM consultant from a building background, and there's a very much Revit sort of driven process. Um, so when you consider some of those limitations that Lee was talking about the other day with um, world coordinate systems, um, it doesn't really make a lot of sense for some of our smaller infrastructure projects. So look, M1, M3, it is a good opportunity for us to spin that process around and use 12D as our primary authoring tool and really test those benefits that BIM promises to deliver and apply it to a more traditional TMR um, highway project. Um, so, look, you would have heard a lot of the benefits that BIM aims to deliver over the last few days, and a lot of you are probably thinking, well, it only applies to the larger projects, because typically that's what, what we're seeing, all the large projects. But today I'm going to outline our approach for embedding BIM workflows as business as usual for all infrastructure projects. So a little bit about myself, uh, my name's Peter Ryan, I'm a technical director for uh, digital engineering and I work in the Jacobs Brisbane office. Um, I, s I was introduced to 12D back in the 90s, I think my first demo was by Peter Tayton when he was still working in the Gold Coast office, so uh, uh, Gold Coast City Council. Um, it's been a few years since I've got deep and dirty with 12D, so don't ask me for any advice on coding snippets, but... Um, Plenty of plenty of other guys in my team who can help you with that. Uh, so just to explain where the project is, we're located uh, south of Brisbane. As the name suggests, we're at the intersection of the three, three motorways, M1, M3 and the Gateway. Uh, look, the M3 motorway is the, the chief, the main uh, southern connector, <coughs> arterial connector out of Brisbane. Uh, the Gateway Motorway is the, the primary bypass of Brisbane, takes uh, all of the traffic from the Sunshine Coast and ultimately connects to the Bruce Highway uh, up in the northern Queensland. The M1 services all destinations south, including the Gold Coast, uh, and then connects into New South Wales, into the Pacific Motorway, down to Sydney. Uh, and our, our project located right there in the middle of those. And one interesting fact I didn't, didn't realise until we started on this job, but the section uh, south of our project from Eight Mile Plains down the Logan River carries the highest traffic volumes in, in Queensland. It's also the highest traffic section of the national transport uh, network between Brisbane and Sydney. It uh, carries about 78,000 vehicles a day. Uh, just an overview of the site, uh, of, of our project. Um, it includes uh, the widening of the southbound carriageway to three lanes for a, for a section of 3.8 kilometres. Um, it also includes a realignment of that southbound carriageway to provide a five-lane cross-section um, where the Gateway Motorway comes in. And that realignment enables uh, future, uh, future works on the northbound carriageway. Uh, we're building a new bridge over Underwood Road. That, that bridge is being constructed uh, adjacent to the existing one. Uh, and it's, it's uh, designed to, to span the, the five traffic lanes. Uh, we're closing a, a, a bus, bus entry from the existing eight miles um, bus station. We're constructing a new bus on ramp at School Road. Uh, and there's managed motorways technology all the way through the site. The project is being delivered as a design and construct. Uh, Jacob's uh, providing the design services to the principal contractor, Lendlease. And 12D has been utilised for all the civil design elements. Uh, the bridge is modelled in Revit 
and all our models are federated in Navisworks. Uh, look, this is a, a, a good aerial perspective of the existing site. Um, similar comment to what Stuart made. The first thing I noticed when I saw this photo was, well, where are all the cars? I mean, must have been taken on a Sunday morning because anyone who knows this area, the first thing you'd expect when you come through this, this, um, this section of the M1 is you'd normally expect to see a, a sea of red tar lights up the hill in front of you. Um, so you can see there where the Gateway Motorway comes in. Uh, so we've got two lanes of that Gateway Motorway. Joins on with the Pacific Motorway. Down the bottom of the page is uh, from Brisbane. Gold Coast is up the top of the page. Uh, and you can also see the South East Busway on the eastern side of the motorway there. So the principal aim of this project is, is reducing congestion and improving uh, safety at the the junction of all these motorways. So, BIM execution. So, look, M1, M3 is the third TMR BIM project, uh, pilot project. You heard Stuart talk about uh, Rockley to Dara. So this one follows on directly after that one. Uh, so we're working to the requirements defined by Brian McSweeney from TMR. We hold uh, regular BIM coordination meetings between Jacobs, Len Leeson and TMR. Um, the Len Lease and Jacobs BIM offering has been developed from experience delivering a few of the recent projects in South East Queensland including uh, the Gateway Upgrade North and Kingsford Smith Drive Upgrade. Uh, so both those projects are currently under construction. Um, so the first thing we did when we established the project was, was establishing the, some of the key, key BIM roles which may have seemed a little bit um, new to some of the civil teams, but in actual fact, they really just formalise some of the tasks that, that, that they normally do on those projects. Um, so uh, digital engineering leads for the projects were myself and Alex Harris from um, Lendlease. Uh, and we really just ensure that the project follows the process and workflows that we defined in the BIM execution plan. Um, we establish discipline model managers. Uh, once again, um, a lot of the teams already had uh, people playing this role, but they probably just didn't relate to the to the to the term model manager. Um, in my mind, this is the the key role for the whole project. So, making sure that each discipline follows their correct conventions and has a consistency in their design process and outputs. Um, we also established a BIM, BIM manager. Uh, look, on a job like this, that's a part-time role due to, due to the size of the project. Uh, and his job is to federate the models, uh, check the inputs from each discipline, and then ultimately provide clash reports. So look, to develop our BIM execution plan, um, it was important that we align with the objectives of each of the parties. Um, so look, starting with TMR, the owner, um, so some of the objectives that they listed out to, that they wanted to achieve out of this pilot was understand what is reasonably achievable for designers and contractors using current technology and what are the challenges that we face. Um, they were testing are the requirements of the BIM functional specs appropriate, are there any elements that impose an unnecessary cost to the project. Uh, continuously improve uh, clarity in the BIM specifications through collaboration with industry partners, develop internal TMR skill set for electronic delivery and review, and assisting industry to deliver the ultimate TMR objective of a LOD 500 object-based as-built model. Now that sounds a little bit more um, scary than what it really is. Um, and look, from my perspective, I think it's commendable that TMR are taking a common sense approach to some of these initial BIM projects. Uh, they're not imposing onerous BIM requirements, as we're seeing from some of the other, other major projects. Uh, and they're particularly mindful about the cost implications that BIM can potentially have, particularly in these early, early phases where technology is still developing. Um, so it's good to see that you won't see any reference to 5D, 6D in, um, in any of the BIM requirements at the moment. Uh, construction, so what are Lend-Lease all about? 
Um, first, first objective, avoiding duplicate modelling effort for construction set out. Um, so this, this is a particularly interesting one um, for, that I see uh, is benefit that we can get from BIM. Um, historically, the designers and surveyors have maintained separate models. In many cases, the survey teams will build their own models. Uh, and I'll talk about a little bit more about that uh, later on. Uh, an obvious one I think that everyone would appreciate is identifying clashes before construction. Um, Lend lease are very big about using the 3D model to assess safety during construction. They also educate their construction teams to understand the scope, status of work in progress. Um, and they also use the model uh, for assessing constructability and simulating sequencing, construction sequencing. Typically they won't do that over the whole project, but identify areas where there is a critical activity. Um, so what's in it for us? I mean, there must be some benefits that we can get out of this. Uh, so the first, first one is, and if there was only one thing that we did achieve out of this, it is really just getting a collaborative 3D coordinated design for all disciplines. So that's probably okay for the civil guys. I mean, we've all been working in a, in a 3D environment for 15, 20 years. Uh, but then there's an extra level of detail we need to go to. So we can't sort of hide behind standard drawings anymore. Um, you know, we do need to model pretty well every element that makes up that civil surface. Uh, so we do need to model every pram ramp, every driveway. Um, uh, civil, a lot, of the, a lot of the designers question some of the detail that we go to, but then when they see some of the benefits that come out of that. So for instance, um, DDA compliance, having absolute confidence that our model uh, now complies with cross falls. We do know that pram ramps will fit in, they won't foul any, any, any islands. It's a little bit harder for uh, some of the other disciplines, so, such as the electrical, lighting and signals. They really still don't have the applications they need. Um, so we're using, uh, encouraging our teams and educating our people to use a 3D model for reviews. Um, we're providing string set out, um, and so we're setting out from models, not from drawings, so direct benefit for us. You know, we're not providing set out tables on drawings, we're not providing annotated cross sections. Um, so a direct saving for us there. Um, educating our, our designers that, and it's not so much designers but engineers, the whole, whole team, that the model really does take priority over the drawings. Um, and once you get that, that, that mindset in place, then the, hesit, hesit, the, the reluctance to hand over electronic data um, is, is then a lot easier to, to get your head around. Um, and so then project like this, we're then aiming to embed our BIM workflows on every project, not just on the ones that are defined as a BIM project. I think uh, everyone in the room should probably understand that every project that they're currently working on is a BIM project. The only thing that, that, that varies is probably the, um, the level, of, level of detail that you go to with your, with your handover. Um, so look, the challenge out of all that is we end up bringing forward a lot of that effort into, into the design phase. So we have to put a lot more effort up front. Um, so still delivering to a program and budget. Um, uh, so it's important that we sort of learn from some of the mistakes from our building, building um, background and make sure that we don't uh, result in large cost overruns on some of these early projects. So look, one of the the first bits of BIM jargon that you'll sort of come across when you get into this space is common data environment. Um, major projects like ours, we need to adapt to different data management systems. In, I mean, uh, just about every project we work on has, has different systems in place. I tend to use the, the term connected data environment, which probably describes it a little bit better for me. Um, so our design management process on, on M1, M3 starts with uh, TeamBinder, which is what um, TMR are using for all their project correspondence. Um, both Jacobs and Len Lease use ProjectWise for our, uh, our primary data management system. 
So on M1, M3, we're using 12D Synergy as our working environment for all 12D data. We're also using the managed folders uh, functionality for other things like TwoFlow, trying to encourage uh, as many of our other disciplines uh, into Synergy as we can. Uh, we've developed workflows for transferring uh, deliverables. Uh, so all of our deliverables to TMR need to go through Lendlease uh, through their document control process. So we publish out of 12D Synergy in the project wise, Lendlease then issue via um, their doc control to TeamBinder. And there's also uh, an electronic, uh, electronic data drop of uh, large data files directly into TMR's Synergy system. So the benefits of 12D Synergy. So for me, the, probably the key one is, is just the integrity of our data. Uh, so the data doesn't leave the system. So we have faith that we always have the latest data. We, we don't have any questions over whether it's the right data. Um, you've heard um, Joel and Stuart talk about flexible work arrangements. Um, and that's, 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 that's an, an obvious one, I think. Um, being able to access our global resource pool. So on M1, M3, we're using designers from Brisbane, Cairns, Hobart and Sydney. Uh, and so consequently, where uh, Jacobs are adopting Synergy as a working environment for all of our 12D projects, even if it's a single designer project, we'll set it all up in Synergy. Um, so yeah, look, the primary objective out of our design phase is the spatial coordination of all the discipline, discipline models. Uh, but our approach is to federate that in 12D. Um, so we can really design clashes as we go. Um, when we started, our buildings, buildings team warned us about the dangers of, of running clash, getting caught up in clash detections in Navisworks. In some ways, picking a, a clash in Navisworks a week after you've, you've, you've passed it on to the BIM guide is really too late. I mean, we want to capture those clashes as we go. So it's good to see that there's new functionality in version 14 that, that, that will help with um, clash detections in 12D. Um, the other point is, look, the rendered visual presentation is not a real priority for us in the design phase. I mean, we prefer to use bold colours just so we can easily identify those objects. Um, we're continually refining our checking process uh, for electronic review of our 12D models. Um, macros for obviously for aquaplaning, sight lines uh, and one initiative we've taken on um, M1, M3 is instead of uh, producing sketches to, to verify things like sight lines, we're actually, it, it, it doesn't take much effort to mesh those sight lines out of 12D um, and publish them in Navisworks and then hand that over as a deliverable to um, uh, TMR for checking. Uh, look, when we started this project and wrote our BIM execution plan, we, there were a lot of gaps in our knowledge and, of BIM workflows and also limitations in the technology. Um, we were quite fortunate that with um, C1M, the timing of, of IFC import uh, has really helped us on this project. So being able to pull Revit data straight back into 12D uh, really did help with, with our, our project. Um, being able to cut sections through our, our bridge is a good example. Um, some of the other 12D functionality that is timed perfectly for our project. Um, pavements is a good, a good discussion topic. I mean, this is probably the first DNC project I've been involved with where we agreed to model pavements in our design phase. I mean, typically pavements are inherent as probably one of the most, one of the uh, disciplines on the on the project that it, that will ha go through a number of number of changes. And typically, the pavement engineer will will design it and uh, come up with an unbound pavement. Independent ver verifier will go, no, we're not going to do that. We want to want to stabilise pavement. We'll then hand it over to TMR. They'll go, no, we're not going to do that. We want an upside-down pavement. 
So in all of these iterations, there's, there's change, documentation change, design change. Um, so it's only with uh, the new 12D pavement manager that um, Peter Tayton um, rolled out to us while we're, while we're starting the project that I, I thought that we could take on that risk of dealing with change, being able to assign pavement styles to coloured um, tins and really doing some preliminary um, pavement modelling um, gave me the confidence that we could deal with that change. Uh, so that'll be an interesting, interesting journey as we go through construction. Um, to help with that, Lend Lease agreed to pull forward a lot of their um, CBR testing, so we know what the CBRs will be in the design phase. So it was a bit of a collaborative effort there. Fence macro, I mean, fence is a good example of an object that we really don't want to spend a lot of time getting caught up on. So having, um, having Peter respond quickly to come up with options for fences was, was well timed for our project. Um, some of the other things, um, also traffic signal. So again, the most important thing for us with the traffic signal is the footing that sits in the ground. Um, the stuff above the ground is, is, is really just a pretty picture. So again, Peter spent time developing his traffic signal macro, uh, which we've adopted on the project. Uh, we've done a lot of, lot of work with, with underground services, particularly on, on Kingsford Smith Drive. So um, using some of the u utility pit macros uh, quite successfully on this job as well. Uh, some of the stuff we've been talking about with, with Brendan from TMR, we've, we've used, adopted the TMR guardrail macro um, on this project. I mean, the output was written for visualisation objects, so, but now we can pull those in as, as dry meshes. A couple of, couple of disciplines that I still think have got a lot, lot more work to go on them are street signs and, and gully pits. Look, we're not, not wasting a lot of time on gully pits. I've noticed um, some of the new version 14 functionality that will help hopefully um, uh, provide a bit more functionality there. And, and street signs is a real big one that I think will will do better on the next project. When you think of the directional signs, for instance, where we'll design them in, design sign faces in Tracy CAD and then posts and footings in Traces and then model them in 12D or something, something else. I mean, it's a very disjointed design process. Uh, so I'm hoping that we'll see some some improvements in a, in a more integrated sign design process. Um, so talking about then some of, the, some of the things we can do in our design process just to help with the construction phase. So over the last three projects, we've had a lot of meetings with the Lend Lease survey team and really come to understand their requirements a lot better. Um, the, first, the first item's a good one about establishing confidence in the quality of our design model. Um, so talking about, well, why do the survey guys recreate models and, and create their own models? The main one they said to us was, well, we'll issue models to them, but then we'll have a disclaimer that says, here's a model, all care, no responsibility. Um, they, they then say to us, well, by doing that, they then don't really have much confidence in what we're handing over and they're forced to then take the drawings as gospel. So they then will then model drainage gully pits from scratch, etc. Um, there's a lot of times where we'll just refer to a standard drawing and then they'll point out to us, well, that's all well and good, but when have you ever seen a pram ramp that has been built as per the standard drawing. So there's been a, a, a good um, appreciation of how we can provide a design that, that uh, fits better for the survey guys. Um, and really giving them confidence that when we hand over a design model, it will suit what they need. Um, so we're educating those guys to actually use our model. Yes, they will verify against the drawings, but they're not necessarily going to recreate 
um, from scratch. Uh, we've established that the 12DA format is the only construction deliverable that we'll hand over for survey set out. So we, we won't hand them Revit files. We will pull that Revit file into 12D, hand them a 12DA file. Uh, CAD files, we won't just throw CAD files at them. We will pull that CAD file into 12D and hand over a 12D format. Because um, the reality is, that's what they want. Um, and then all of our 12D models are tracked by document number and revision. So our project is reaching the end of the design phase. So we're just about to, to start into the construction phase. So it's a little bit hard for us at the moment to actually work out, have we got a return on our investment? Um, we're sitting okay with our design budgets at the moment. We haven't blown our budgets with a BIM delivery. But some of the, some of the, the KPIs that we're, we're hoping we will we'll see through the construction phase uh, will be a reduction in RFIs relating to set out errors. Um, previous jobs, I guarantee, if we pushed out pages and pages of set out coordinates, there would invariably be a number of errors in them. Um, not having to worry about our set out coordinates really does then put that reliance back onto the model. Um, clashes, identifying clashes prior to construction should be an obvious uh, benefit. Um, some of the, the, the less tangible benefits, lend lease. Um, on the last couple of projects, have used their, their Navisworks models to help their, design, uh, their construction teams just get a better understanding of the design intent. Um, I must admit, trying to understand the design from a set of drawings can be quite hard at times, um, so giving them the 3D model helps. Uh, Lend-lease. Um, Uh, are also um, by adopting our our design models, will hopefully um, report a reduction in their survey modelling effort. Um, so we'll be following that closely, and the workflows and processes that we've developed on M1 M3 will hopefully then be adopted as business as usual for our other traditional delivery projects. Uh, so finally, thanks, thanks for your time uh, and look, I'm happy to take questions at morning tea.